Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So you guys have seen us strip down the Sarko and get all of the axles and many pieces of Land Rovers out of it. Yeah. Um, and this is what we're left with. Um, so. Not a lot. Not a lot. Most of it's on the floor. <laughs> but we do have a plan to try and save as much as we can of the original chassis because that's that's quite an important part of this project, isn't it? Yeah, to try and trying to preserve history rather than recreate it as such. Yeah. You can see from the chassis you could easily make another one of these, couldn't you? Because it's pretty simple. Yeah, it's, if you look in the whole heater, you can see how it's made of two two separate C channels and then seam welded top and bottom. Yeah. It's a very simple box section with brackets welded on pretty much. Yeah, it's it's all farm painted, farmer's painted sort of stuff. It's yeah. all flat plate box and tube. Yeah, but while we could break a new one, we don't want to because the point of it being a prototype vehicle is that it's original and it's survived as long as it is. Um, only just. Only just, yeah. So we'll try, and, we'll try and save as much as we can. So the plan, the plan for today, we've got a rough plan in mind. Not, not a very well fleshed out one, but we're going to use a jet wash over there with a um, turbo nozzle on it. Try and knock off as much of this scale as possible. We'll lose, really lose stuff. Sorry about the screaming, screaming children in the background. Um, and then we're going to switch over to, what's it called? A, jet, a, a, a wet blaster. Wet yeah. blaster, which is like a, basically an attachment that lets you, yeah, lets you suck up sand into the jet stream, doesn't it, basically? Yeah. So it's going to blast, basically, be like a, like a sort of semi sandblasting tool. So we're going to see what that does. Um, Maybe not a lot. I've not got the greatest amount of hopes. It's 30 quid from Amazon, but yeah. it's. It should help a bit though, it should, it, it yeah, should knock it off. Yeah, it should knock all the, all the scale off like that, yeah. well, the, the jet washer won't touch. So. And the reason we're not going straight to shot blasting is because once we've knocked off all the loose stuff, we actually want to 3D scan the entire chassis. Um, yeah. Uh, which is like, probably not the way that most people would do this, but you wanna, we want to 3D scan it so we can try and get a, get a, um, a virtual kind of model of what this is supposed to be like this chassis before it goes to the proper shot blast process which is going to obviously take away a lot of this what's left of the metal so yeah like i, I, I foresee if when we get to drop it off with a, with a full fully fledged shot blast we're going to lose stuff like this yeah. and you know this so it'll be difficult to recreate bits if we've lost the original geometry if we can capture a 3d model of it before it's yeah totally blown away, at least we've got something to work with afterwards as a reference piece. Right, yeah. Yeah, so, alright, let's get it hitched up, get it yeah. all hooked up and see what it does. <laughs> <laughs> With the jet wash hooked up and the steg raring to go, it was time to let her rip. Not as dry as I want one <laughs> You're not rusty looking anywhere. <laughs> Here you can really see the rotating action of the nozzle on the jet wash, stripping off the loose rust and dirt and doing exactly what we want and revealing the metal beneath. Bloody thing. <laughs> Nick's now mostly covered in chassis. What's the crack? Much 
rust fell out. So we've now blasted all of the loose bits of rust off of the chassis. Um, it's still got surface rust on everything, obviously, but all the big, big chunks of sort of flaky bits have all been blasted off now, and they're all over the floor. Um, That's going to take ages to clean up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the next plan is we're going to lift it up the map row, and we're going to take it into the shed, and we're going to start the next part of the process. Oh, it's like tilted down at the front. Oh, Is this filming? Yes. It's going to be awesome, man. awesome outtakes. It's like, here, yeah, we just have a side camera here. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. 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 Oh, God, the wheel. What was that? Was that a wheel? Yeah, that was a wheel. Yeah. Nice. Technical issues. <laughs> So, as part of Nick's engineering business, NRS 91 Engineering, or Code UK, go check it out. What have we got on there actually? Uh, there's some examples of some of the, the 3D scanning that gearbox, and there's some examples of the cab work we've done, and the 3D printing the prototypes as well. Yeah, so it's all like your 3D yeah. engineering side of things. Um, this is the tool we're going to use to 3D scan entirety of the chassis that we've got over there. Um, the idea behind that is that we're going to be able to custom make repair panels and sections to go into the chassis um, based on the CAD that we're going to get from this. So instead of um, physically measuring each panel that you need and then cutting it manually, the idea is we can scan it, make it into a CAD model and then send files with the right shapes to people that have CNC plasma cutting capabilities and then get repair panels made that will fit straight on hopefully as a plan. <laughs> <laughs> but, well yeah that's the plan but also the, the other part of that plan would be uh, we've only jet washed this so far and tried to do a mild sandblast right uh, so we when we send it away for full shot blast we don't know how much of this is going to actually come back to us so, so it's nice to have a record of yeah, try what keep, shape it's meant to be. Yeah, before it gets completely <laughs> taken back to the, the structure the metal is left behind. Yeah, because it only takes one fourth accident to totally ruin so, the side road. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're doing a service for the Land Rover community in this world, preserving a digital version of this chassis, which would be the, definitely be the first time it's ever been done. Yeah, I don't think it's, I don't think this has <laughs> ever had anything digital at all. No. <laughs> I mean, this will be the first time anything would like to do with Osaka. We will be put onto CAD, like a three D model, probably. Yeah, probably. Just because there's so few of them. It's an eighties vehicle. It was a prototype, yeah. Yes. So, we're gonna three D scan it. It was gonna go get shot blasted, and then whatever comes back, we're gonna be able to repair using the model that we're gonna get from this to make. Laser cut plates, plasma cut plates. Um, so, the process of doing this is quite complex, as you can imagine. But the first thing we've done is calibrated the scanner using this board, which basically, how does that work? What does it do? It's, it's basically like a mini game before you can actually get to the point of scanning it. So, you, you take, you, you've got two cameras on the scanner that are focusing on the laser pattern. Yeah. So it's calibrating the height and where, it's, where the cameras are conjoining. And then as, as you move, move the camera from different angles, it, it views a preset layout. Yeah, so the last shot of doing that calibration was that we got, was it 0.007, so 0.7 or something like that? Something yeah, less than that thing. Right? Yeah, um, level of accuracy. So that's the kind of level of accuracy you're talking about with this. Kind of equipment. Um, that's going to be yeah, double zero seven. 
Wait, double zero seven. Double zero seven. So yes. Yeah, well, so, so seventy microns. Um, which is crazy. That's probably going to be way more than is actually needed for this project, um, yeah. being that it's like kind of built in the way that Land Rover chassis are, which is like to the nearest half inch probably. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and then it's had thirty years worth of sea corrosion on it, so it's probably not in the right shape anyway. Yeah. So it's going to definitely be accurate enough for this, for this job, I thought. Um, and then, so the next stage after that is that we're going to be applying lots of these little stickers. Yeah, so we've got a little magnetic box similar to what are on the the uh, calibration board. Yeah. So, so we'll apply these all over the. Are they magnetic, are they? No, those are stickers. Those are stickers. Are. Okay. Uh, those ones that you use for the photogrammetry and magnetic, that's just part of keeping your vol volumetric accuracy correct. Right. So these go on as well as these reflective dots? To start with. Okay. And then afterwards, when we do the actual laser scan, they come on. Right. And, the, and the scale bars come off as well. Okay. Because that's a repeating pattern, so we get confused. I see, right, yeah. yeah. So basically, we're going to end up covering the entire chassis um, in a more or less random way, aren't we, with these? Yeah, if you do a pattern, it will get confused. <laughs> yeah. So you need to you need to put these in, in a random orientation rather than a, a, a sort of lin a line pattern because I think that's the hardest part. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Repeating pattern. <laughs> um, and then that will basically does that paint kind of gives the overall envelope of the shape for it to. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna mean that when it can reference where the, the lasers are looking at yeah. in space. And you're kind of telling it what surfaces you want to pick up, aren't you, with these? Yeah, yeah you can cancel out the floor with those. Right, right. Yeah. You, can, you can set a baseline to cut off the wall. Sweet. And then you're going to walk around waving that around. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to end up with a model, hopefully. That's, that's a game plan. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's a very interesting process. Um, Obviously, very high tech, like way more high tech than this probably deserves, but it's <laughs> it's getting the best treatment. Yeah, that's the point. Sweet. Right, let's get started then. So, as we just mentioned there, the first task is to stick on these reflective dots in a non repeating pattern on all the surfaces that we wanted to collect on the 3D scanner. Now that non-repeating pattern is actually a lot harder to do than it sounds. Um, the human brain naturally wants to make patterns, so you find yourself trying to space them evenly and put them in lines when really you don't want to be doing that. So uh, I'll time-lapse this because sticking stickers on is pretty boring really. So here we go. We actually used over 2,000 of these reflective dots on the Asako. So the next step was to grab the scanner, start firing lasers at the chassis, and cue the funk. You can see as Nick scans the rear cross member of the chassis, it appears in real time on the screen in front of our very eyes. How cool is that? The Scantec B11 system that Nick has here is a marvel of technology. It uses 11 lasers to take 1.3 million measurements per second, and it gives an accuracy level of 0.02 millimeters. That's a bit more advanced than my Stanley tape measure then. For projects like this, it's a fantastic tool and it opens up an entirely new way of solving engineering problems. If you have any projects in mind that you think might benefit from 3D scanning, get in contact with Nick through his website at nrs91engineering.co.uk. I'll leave a link in the description.
The end result of all that arm waving and laser firing is an incredibly accurate 3D model of the entire Asako chassis and superstructure. With this, we have a digital record of the exact shape and dimensions of the Asako, and a very easy way of designing and cutting repair sections and panels to fit perfectly. 21st century technology is coming to the rescue of a very 20th century vehicle. I bet old Michael Somerton Rayner never imagined this when he was welding together this prototype in the early 80s. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time on Stranger Landies.